Hello everyone. So let's solve uh, one more problem. Uh, this is example 6.29 uh, uh, from the book Electrical Technology by B.L. Terejo. Determine the ampere turns required to produce a flux of 0.38 millivolts in an iron ring of mean diameter 58 centimeters. Okay. So uh, let's draw the ring. So this is the iron ring and the mean diameter. Okay, so D equal to 58 centimeters okay. and the cross section area is 3 square centimeters. So this cross section area is 3 centimeters square. Okay. Uh, use the following data for the ring and if you look at the data uh, we have B and nu R. So normally you will, you will know what is the flux density and the electric field intensity H. But then here if you notice B and mu R are given. Okay. So the relative permeability of the material itself is a function of the flux density. And as you notice uh, when the flux density is increasing 0.5 Tesla to 1 Tesla to 1.2 Tesla to 1.4 Tesla, the relative permeability of the magnetic material is decreasing. So this is what is the expected. Mu R is not a constant, mu R keeps reducing. That means what is the meaning? If the mu R value is high, relative permeability is high. That means it offers very low uh, reluctance for the magnetic flux to flow. That is true when the flux density is less. So as the flux density increasing, the material gets saturated and as it is getting saturated, it cannot uh, offer uh, low reluctance. So therefore mu R is becoming low. Okay? So this is the general trend. So you can also uh, make a quick plot of it and then you can see uh, how the mu r itself is varying. So, so the new thing in this question is that normally bh curve uh, will be given but for this problem the b mu r curve is given. Okay. So anyway, so from bh curve I can, I can derive b mu r curve and from b mu r curve I can also derive b, bh curve. So that again I leave it as a, uh, as a example for you to try. So let's let's uh, get back to our question. The flux is also given. So the flux is 0.38 millivolts. So I know the flux, I know the area, and I know the length. Uh, by the way, what is the length of the path? So the entire path is 58 centimeters diameter. Okay. So what is the length? Is nothing but pi d. Okay. So 58 centimeters multiplied by pi. Okay. So let's let's first do that calculation so i am i am getting my calculator so 58 multiplied by pi so i get 182.2 okay so i am just writing 182 centimeters or uh, this is 1.82 meters okay, so this is the length of the magnetic path now uh, what is the flux density so flux is given and area is also given. So flux density. Okay. So flux density is flux per unit area. So 0.38 millivolts. That means 10 to the power of minus 3 uh, Weber's divided by area of cross section is 3 centimeter square. That is 3 into minus 10 to the power of 4 meter square. Okay. So Weber's per meter square should be the unit for the flux density. So let's calculate this. So 10 power 3 and 10 power 4 if I cancel. So I get a 10 at the numerator. So uh, I'll get 3.8 divided by 3. Okay, so let's do that. So 3.8 divided by 3. So I'm getting 1.267 Tesla. Okay. So this is the flux density. Okay, Tesla is nothing but Weber's per meter square. Now given this flux density, I want to find out what is the mu r of the material because uh, what is the overall objective? The objective is to find the ampere turns. Okay? So to find the ampere turns, uh, I can find the flux density. From flux density, I will find out the field intensity h and from field intensity multiplied by the length, I will find the ampere turns. So that is my plan. So first let's find out what is mu r. Now if you closely look at the table for 1.2 flux density, the mu r is 1500 and as the flux density increases to 
the mu r reduces to 1000. Okay. So the value that is 1.267 falls somewhere in between, okay. in between 1.2 and 1.4. So the way we calculate mu r is a simple interpolation. Okay. So, so that means if I plot it as a, this one, so this is this is 1.2 and this is 1.4. So this this value is uh, 1500 and this value is 1000. Okay. So so this is the redu reduction. So for our quantity, how much is the value? So how do you do that? I'll just directly write the formula from observation. So for a gap of 0.2, the flux density is uh, reducing. So for 0 0.2, I am losing 500 value. Okay. So, so let me do that. So this is uh, 1.2, so 0 0.067. Okay. So 0 0.067 is the difference between 1.2 and this one. This multiplied by uh, 500 divided by 0.2. Okay. So this is a simple interpolation formula. I am just writing it down by observation. I have, so if you get doubt here, just uh, use your uh, basic uh, coordinate geometry things to do that. Okay. So it's just a proportionally I am reducing. Okay. So what is this? Let me calculate that. So 0 0.067 divided by 0 0.2 is this 0 0.335, so multiplied by 500. So this 167.5, I have to subtract from 1500. Okay, so, so if I do that, I am getting 1332. Uh, 0.5, I will just ignore. Uh, this will be my mu r. Okay? So remember, mu r is related to permeability, so it does not have any unit. Okay? Now that I know mu r, so I can find out what is h. Okay, so so uh, as you know, h is nothing but b into mu. Okay. Just a minute. So just a correction, h is nothing but b divided by mu. Okay. So the b is known. Okay. So what is mu? Mu is nothing but mu naught into mu r. Okay. So I have everything. So what is b? Okay. So b is flux density 1.267 tesla divided by mu naught that is 4 pi into 10 power minus 7 and then mu r relative permeability that is uh, just now we estimated that that is 1332. Okay. So let's calculate what is the H from this. Okay. So I'm just bringing my calculator up. One point two six seven. Okay, divided by. 4 into pi into 7 with a minus sign to 10 power 7 into 1, 3, 3, 2. So I am getting 7, 5, 7, this one. So what is the unit? So if you look at this, I think this is ampere turns per meter. Okay? This is the unit of the H. So now I know the length. So if I want to find out the total ampere turns, ampere turns required is nothing but H into L. So that is nothing but 757 multiplied by 1.82. Okay. So into 1.82. So I get it 1377 ampere turns. Okay. So this is our final answer for the problem. So what is the uh, new thing in this problem is that so the geometric properties are given 
but then the relation between flux and the relative permeability is given. So therefore, from that, uh, I first estimated what is the flux density. Then from the relation, I found out what is the mu r, and then using that mu r, I found out what is the h. And then finally, I am able to, uh, just by multiplying with length, I am able to find the total ampere turns required. So the determine the ampere turns required is was the question. So and the ampere turns required is 1374. Again, I hope you have learned something new from this problem. So we'll see more problems.